Greetings and welcome back to Son of the Cinema. Uh, it's a bit of a jump to the left uh, in the, the movie I'm going to be reviewing today. I don't normally do this genre, um, horror, but it's John Carpenter's 1982 classic, The Thing. Now, The Thing had already been made in 1951, and it was based on a short novella that was written, um, I think, in 1938 called Who Goes There? Um, and the basic premise of that novella was there's an American Antarctic research team who uncovers this alien life form that has been buried in the ice. And this life form starts to can assimilate um, other organisms. And so obviously the implications are quite dire. So there was a very successful film made in 1951. And in the mid-70s, they decided to remake it. And several d directors were approached, uh, originally Tobe Hooper, because he, he had uh, found success with uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And eventually that was canned. Uh, the, the producers didn't like his take on the subject matter. And John Carpenter was approached. And because of John Carpenter's success with Halloween, and of course in 1979, Alien was a massive success. So the whole project was revived again in the wake of Alien. And I must say that it certainly equals Alien uh, in terms of one of the best sci-fi stroke horror movies ever made. Um, creature films, Monster in the House, if you will. Um, and that relies very much on Carpenter's direction and a superb cast that he gathered. Um, it was shot on location in Antarctica, but of course there were several um, problems in filming as there always are on location. And so they had to do a lot of the interiors in Los Angeles. But of course the problem was that it was now summer and the temperature outside was 38 degrees. And they had to recreate a temperature inside the Hollywood studio lots of minus two. So you can imagine these actors going from that minus two temperature into the 38 degrees a lot of the actors got sick got flu but as real troopers just carried on filming uh, they even use humidifiers to create that sort of um, uh, effect of the ice on the breath um, the cold on the breath and it really the interiors create that incredible just like alien the incredible feeling of claustrophobia in this movie um it's really a tightly directed movie. Um, Carpenter, as he showed in Halloween, has got this incredible ability to create tension with these amazing gliding um, tracking shots, just building up tension, building up tension, building up tension. Where is the thing? Um, you know, these tracking shots, empty location, um, you know, the, we're just outside of frame. And in fact, Dean Cundy, who shot uh, um, the film, a brilliant Australian cinematographer, is, uh, suggested they shoot it anamorphic because he could then uh, put several actors into the frame, but at the same time creating that sense of confinement and using negative space so that you just never knew outside of the frame where the creature was was hiding. Um it's really the combination of, of a really tight script, a tight, tight, tight direction and, and superb editing and superb acting by the cast uh, that creates really a, a wonderful movie. I've seen this film several times. I never get tired of it. It, um, it, it really is. A, it's almost like an Agatha Christie movie, a whodunit, um, except that the murderer is a shape-shifting alien. Uh, but let's get to the story. So the film opens with uh, uh, the American Research Center um, in this freezing Arctic landscape. And you just hear Ennio Morricone's throbbing, pulsating, ominous score. And you and you see this lone dog being chased by this helicopter. And you just know the, the, there's trouble coming. Um, Carpenter just knows how to create tension. And also, he's got a very simplistic but very effective musical score that he uses and Ennio Morricone who wrote the score collaborated with Carpenter and it's very similar to the Halloween score very simple but incredibly effective so you have the solitary dog running away from these Norwegians who are trying to kill it 
um, the American base eventually try to stop the Norwegians, end up killing them in self-defense, and they rescue the dog. Um, but of course, unbeknownst to them, the dog is not a dog. And um, for those of you who haven't seen the film, don't want to elaborate too much, except um, the dog goes into the kennel with the other dogs, and a slight metamorphosis happens. Now, the gentleman uh, responsible for the special effects was Rob Bowton, who was well respected in Hollywood. He, in fact, was awarded um, a Special Academy Award in 1991 for his contributions to film. And his effects here are incredible. Um, it's just interesting to note that in, uh, I think in 2011, there was a prequel to the thing made and they decided to use CGI as opposed to in-camera effects. And it just doesn't have the same visceral impact. Rob Bowton's effects are absolutely incredible. I mean, it's a combination of food products, chemicals, uh, mechanical moving parts, rubber, and it creates this this um, tangible, textured, layered creature, which you could never uh, achieve uh, with CGI. It's just not the same. And really, the effects are seen to be believed. So, okay, the dog metamorphosizes. They manage to kill the dog. But that is not the end of it because this creature is hell-bent on survival. So whatever little dripping, oozing organism is somewhere in the camp, it is now looking for life. And the easiest way to hide is to assimilate another organism. So one by one... Um, the, the 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 members of the camp are getting infected and this creature is replicating them so nobody knows who the person next to you could be the thing so there's an incredible sense of paranoia um, that is just heightened and heightened and heightened throughout this movie um, to an incredible effect um, leading to two extraordinary back-to-back -back iconic scenes that rival the alien chest popping scene. The first is one of the um, characters has a heart attack and they try and revive him um, to horrific effect. I'm not gonna go into detail. You'll have to see the movie to see what happens, um, which are really the effects are <laughs> extraordinary jaw dropping. Honestly, when I saw this for the first time, my jaw was on the floor. I mean, incredible, the vision and the effects that were created in camera. Um, are absolutely astonishing. Should have won an Oscar. Um, really, really highly, um, highly commendable. Uh, what this huge team of... In those days, they asked for a, a budget of... I can't remember, but, the, but at least a tenth of the budget was um, directed towards the special effects, which the studio felt, felt, felt excessive. It was the biggest at that time. But it was justified because the effects are the real star of the movie, together with, of course, the cast, who really play, play it brilliantly. Um, I'm going to talk about them a bit later. So uh, on the back of this um, revival uh, gone wrong, the team decides there is only one thing to do. Uh, the doctor, uh, Blair, in his research, he thought the only way they can actually catch this thing out is to do a blood test and compare the blood of the remaining members with the uncontaminated blood in the blood bank. But of course, when they get to the blood bank, it's been destroyed because the thing obviously doesn't want this test to take place. So eventually things come to a head. McCready, played by brilliantly by Kurt Russell, who's kind of the tough man in the movie, um, the helicopter pilot, he ties all these guys up and does this blood test to see who is the thing. And the tension ramped up in this scene is unbelievable. I mean, with all these guys tied to the chair, you don't know how they're going to react. And of course, when something happens and the blood is touched by this heated object and manifests the thing, all the other characters are still tied to their chair while this thing is metamorphosizing, creating absolute chaos. Um, again, to go into uh, detail about the effects would be wrong to someone who hasn't seen the movie. But the effects are truly mind-blowing and jaw-dropping and really um, iconic. And also, uh, I think, set a precedent in Hollywood for effects. 
Um, the cast is brilliant in this movie. They really, it's like an Agatha Christie, um, as I mentioned before, except the murderer is a shape-shifting alien. But it's really up to the actors to play the reality. Because in many effects, as an actor myself, I know that often you're acting opposite a mark on the side of the camera lens. Uh, and the, the same was the case in The Thing. Or just the AD reading the effects or whatever, and you have to react to it. And these actors do a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant job. Kurt Russell, with those steely eyes, um, does a superb job as McCready. Uh, you can just see right from the beginning where he's playing chess with a computer and the thing beats him and he throws his whiskey into the machine and blows it up and says, cheeky bitch. You know, you can just see this guy is uh, no nonsense. And he's supported by an incredible uh, supporting cast of of veteran stage actors and film actors. Richard Mazur as Clark, the, the kind of guy who looks after the dogs. Um, Richard Dysart, who plays Dr. Copper. Um, uh, Wilfred Brimley, who plays Blair, is also superb. Um, in fact, his character, which also heightens, creates more tension, is that he, in investigating this organism, sees how quickly it replicates and does a little mathematical equation and realizes that if this organism gets out, um, to the outside civilized world within 127,000 hours it will have effect, infected the whole planet so he just makes a decision that this thing is never going to get out and they must rather die and so he sabotages the radios he destroys all the um, transport the helicopter the, um, the motorized snow vehicles everything is destroyed um, so that they can isolate and freeze in order to save humanity well the, the, the rest of the group are not too keen on that idea and so they incarcerate him but of course that will not be the end of the thing um, the rest of the cast uh, I mentioned oh, um, Halligan um, Charles Halligan the wonderful character actor who plays Vance Norris who has undergoes the unfortunate um, heart attack transformation um, is is brilliant um, Keith David, it was his first movie, he was a stage actor, they had to kind of bring him down a bit in terms of his performance, it's also excellent and he became a um, regular John Carpenter actor. Um, and Donald Moffat, another, um, another veteran actor, who has one of the best lines in the film when they managed to, the, when they're doing the blood test and they managed to kill um, the thing but of course before it has infected another member but everybody two guys are still tied to the chairs one of them being gary played by donald moffat and he just says you know i know we've been through a lot but could you please get me out of this effing chair um it's it's yeah it's a fantastic fantastic uh movie it has all the elements of a great uh, piece of cinema um, it has a bit of a kind of a nihilistic ending, but in a way realistic, I guess. Um, and all accompanied again by that throbbing Ennio Morricone, John Carpenter score. Um, this is really ramps up the suspense and the tension, just like Ridley Scott did with Alien. Um, the thing is a classic in its genre. Um, it is not to be missed. <laughs> 